But what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about activating all of you guys and about how we can hear the voice of God for other people. How we can prophesy over other people and bring an encouraging prophetic word for somebody else. And uh, I covered some of the sort of stuff last year when we talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to touch on a few of those things today. But we're also going to do some practical demonstrations. I'm going to demonstrate some stuff for you at the end. And for those of you who are keen, um, you're going to have an opportunity to have a go at this as well. Because I just think it's so important. The win for the church is not just one or two or three people who do it and everybody goes to them. The win for the church is when every one of us starts to rise up into what it is that God has called us to do. When just in every workplace, in every family, right across the world, Christians are rising up and saying, hey, you know what? I'm in touch with the heaven, with, with, with my heavenly father, and I can bring something of him to somebody else. You know, that's our win. That's what it looks like. And that's what I'm keen to be able to do today. And I'm really practical as a person. You'll know that if you know me. Um, I'm really interested in helping people do things. So what I tend to try to do is try to find a way to get things out of the mystical and into the practical. Because often, you know, when we talk about, you know, prophecy or some of these sorts of things and you hear people who do it, they're kind of like, oh, well, you know, I just feel God just speaks to me. And like, I'm always like, well, exactly how does that happen? You know, I heard the voice of God. Well, did you hear it? Did you feel it? Like what? And I find that for me, when... When someone starts to break it down and actually talks about the practicals of how it actually works for them, I often find that that really helps me walk walk forward. And it might not be that I do it exactly the same way that they did it, but there's there's just there's revelation that comes as we begin to do this. And there's some people who've been given a real special gift in this area. Um, You know, there are certain people who just kind of almost from the word go. You know, there's like get people's names and phone numbers and, you know, birth dates and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, you know, and, and that's awesome. And I think in some ways it's almost like, you know, how some people have a particular talent for music and, uh, you know, some people just natural aptitude when it comes to music and, you know, they, they fly above the rest of us in incredible ways. But the cool thing is, though, that every single one of us can take a step. No matter where you're at today in hearing the voice of God, there is a step that you can take to be able to kind of move forward in that. And I think that that's awesome. You know, we don't have to necessarily, it's not about a competition. It's literally about you just being where you are, bringing what you bring to the person who's in front of you that God has put there. That's all that matters. You know, it's, it's not about, you know, who had, you know, the, the most incredible word or whatever. So what, what I'm going to share this morning really is for people who've made a decision to follow Jesus, they've become a Christian, and they want to be able to encourage others either in the workplace or in their friend group with a, a word from God. If you're here this morning and you haven't become a Christian yet, or if you did many years ago and you've kind of drifted, or maybe you don't even know where you're at with God, man, we would love to pray with you at the end and help you with that next step of your journey, okay? So if that's you this morning, you can listen to what what I'm going to say. And and it's interesting. I mean, sometimes we can even start to walk in it. But the primary thing, though, is that we've got to get our relationship with God right. Amen? That's like the most important thing. So come and have a chat with that. So before we get into kind of practical stuff, a couple of things to remember this morning. Number one, God is going ahead of you. So when you come to bring a word to somebody, understand, though, that it's not all up to you. That it's not all on your shoulders, that you're not the only one carrying the burden. One of my favorite verses is Ephesians 2.10, which says that we are his workmanship, created for good works in Christ Jesus, and here's the important part, which he prepared beforehand for us to walk in. What does that mean? That means that God is already going ahead into your week. He's going ahead into your future, and he's setting people up. He's setting situations up for you to be able to literally walk into. So remember, if you have an opportunity to be able to pray for somebody or prophesy or anything like that, it's not all on you. God brought that thing about to start off with. He's already been there setting that thing up. So he's already bringing all his firepower. All the angels are around you in heaven. If you could see, they're all going, come on, come on, you can do it. All you've got to do is just take the step. And sometimes it's spiritual and sometimes it's really not. You know, like yesterday morning, I was still feeling pretty horrible, but my poor dog, Maverick, we've got a golden retriever who's 18 months old, and I love him to bits, and he had not been walked for a few days, and so, you know, the poor dog, he was kind of going out of his mind in our house, you know, because, you know, little 18-month-old dog, man, he's more little, he's big, they need their, they need their, you know, walks and stuff, so I wasn't feeling great, but I thought, well, I'm walking down to the end of the road, and walking back, so I'm walking down the end of the road, 
And as I'm walking down there with him, I see somebody coming in the other direction. And I recognize this guy. He's one of the other leaders who's in our area, you know, Christian leaders. And uh, so anyway, we, we just get talking and, and chatting about stuff. And it was cool because, you know, he just shared a couple of things, some, de some decisions and some stuff that he's making in this next season. And as he was talking about it, I just felt to encourage him with a couple of things. So, so I just said, hey, you know, maybe think about this and about this. And just as I did that, I could see, like, something kind of rise up in him. You know, and, and he's like, man, that's, that's really cool. I'm, I'm, I will think about that. And, and then he, he walked away, and I could see that a spiritual exchange had taken place. Now, I didn't even have to say to him, oh, let me just share a prophetic word with you, brother. You know, should, should we just close our eyes and let's just pray here, you know, on the side of the road? I mean, I could have done that. But you know what? We have to remember, man, there's so much power in our words. And, and there will be times where you, know, you will, like, prophesy over someone. And there might be a time at work where you just call out the destiny that's on someone. And you say, hey, I just want to encourage you. I see this thing on you. And it's very natural, it's very normal, but it brings life and it brings power to them. And that is just as spiritual and just as powerful as these other things. But just remember that God is going ahead of us, amen? We're not doing this all by ourselves. And the second thing is that you have already been anointed for this. And I think that's really important for us to remember too. Um, Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. Why? Because He has anointed me. Past tense. He has anointed me right. to preach good news to the poor, to you know, release the captives from chains, to bind up the brokenhearted. It goes on from there. But the fact is, though, that every single person, if you are a believer, if you are a follower of Jesus in this room, you don't have to wait for an anointing. You are anointed. Amen. And, and I can say that here, but here's how it works. Because what happens sometimes, and I bet all of us have sensed this, because I know I have, There'll be certain situations that kind of come up and you're aware it's like, oh, this is kind of a God moment. But I haven't prayed really much in the last week. And I feel like God's like quite far away. You know, I haven't like spent my week fasting and praying. I mean, you know, in those weeks where you're super awesome and you've been fasting and praying and, you know, like, you know, laying aside everything and seeking God first. I mean, you know, you're really the monster or anything that's out there. But if you're anything like me, you know, you have these other weeks. <laughs> which may be more of the weeks, if we're honest, where it's not like we've been like massively fasting or praying or whatever, and this opportunity comes up, and this little voice in our head says, oh, you, you're not really anointed enough for this. You know, you kind of need to go away, and you've got to fast, and you've got to pray some more, and then kind of come back. And, you know, we, and, and the devil's really, really good, I think, at just lying to us about that. Yeah. You are anointed. And what that means is that even though we sin, even though we fall away, our spirit is righteous and holy at all times. Our spirit man, our inner man, stands before the throne of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What that means is that at all times, yeah. we are his children. We are his sons and his daughters, which means we can come to our Heavenly Father at any point, yes. regardless of if we've had the most incredible week or the worst week in the world. <laughs> we can come to our Heavenly Father and say, God, have you got something to give? Yeah. We can tap in. You know, and... Right, you know, straight away. It's incredible. It's funny, actually, probably a number of, well, about a year ago, I think it was, I was sitting, um, you know, on our couch, and I think I was watching, I don't know, Netflix or something, doing something very spiritual. <laughs> and, um, you know, anyway, Jaden came in, and he sat down next to me, and Jaden's far more spiritual than I am. And so I think he'd been listening to a preaching message or something like that, you know. And anyway, so it was talking about prophecy. And so he says to me, hey, Dad, can you prophesy for me? And I, and I look down at this really spiritual program that I'm watching. I forget what it was. You know, I kind of pause it. And I remember hearing this voice in the back of my head going, oh, you know, you're probably not really in the place to be able to prophesy. Over. You've been watching this program, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it wasn't like a bad program. It was just, you know, TV. But I reminded myself, and I'm like, no, you know what? I stand before, the, the, I stand before God, righteous in my spirit. So I can prophesy right now. I don't have to get myself, you know, I don't have to say, listen, I'll go away and pray and get ready for 15 minutes and then come back and prophesy. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I just started to prophesy of him using some of the, the techniques I'm going to teach in a second. And, you know, it was funny because it kind of, you know, took a moment to get going. But then once it got going, boom, you know, and I could actually see, like, you know, he was in tears by the end of it in a good way because God had really touched his life. You know, and, and see, that's not about me. The reason I'm sharing this is that all of us feel this. 
from time to time. We all feel unworthy. We all feel like we should be praying more. There is no end. You understand that even people who pray 40 hours a week still feel like they should pray more? Like there's no end to that thing. At some point, you've actually just got to stand up and say, you know what, I am righteous before God. I'm walking in this power and I'm going to do this thing. And so I want to activate you this morning and encourage you, man. Don't let the devil lie to you. At any point, you can bring that word. At any point, you can bring that encouragement. Amen? Yeah, come on. You've been anointed for this. I mean, not saying that taking time to get into God's presence and in the right zone beforehand doesn't help. You know, and often I find too, I mean, the reason that I'm able to do some of what I do is because I'm diligent with my quiet times and my prayer times. I do read the Bible. I do pray. So there's a lot of stuff that's kind of going in there all the time. And I really want to encourage you, you know, be faithful with that stuff because it will overflow into then what you're doing uh, as well. I often find too, it's a little bit harder to prophesy sometimes over someone that you know well, simply because you know so many, so much about what's already going on in their life. But don't let that hold you back, you know? Start with what you know and then go to what you don't know. And uh, so that's kind of um, really, I suppose, what I kind of want to uh, share this morning. When it comes to prophesying over someone, my usual approach is to start from the outside and work in. And what I mean by that is that if you're going if, if, if to bring a word for someone, maybe it's somebody here at church or maybe it's uh, you know, on the street or it's just someone's in need or whatever, Here's a very simple and very practical way that you can do it because if somebody comes to you and, and is looking for a word or something and you're kind of like, okay, yeah, I'll give you a word. Hold on, I'm just praying. <laughs> kind of awkward, eh? Whereas there's another way that you can actually go about it, which is that you start with what you can see about the person. Right. You call out and you thank God for the good things that you can already see in their life. Yeah. And what I find is that when you begin with that, it then starts the flow yeah. of them being able to move to what is unseen in that person's yeah. life. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you can start off and you can say, hey, God, I thank you for this person. I thank you, Lord, for their heart. I thank you, God, for you know, what it is that they're doing you know, and the, the way that they're serving you and the blah, blah, blah. You can start off with all this sort of stuff. And what I find is that that actually just gets you traction and enough kind of purchase, I suppose, or, you know, partway down the track to then start to begin to hear from God for the stuff that you can't see. So begin from the outside and start working in. And I usually find that this is kind of the catalyst then that God then begins to drop pictures or words or scriptures into my mind. I really want to encourage you, if you want to prophesy, read a lot of scripture. Get lots and lots and lots of scripture in you. Like read the Bible heaps. Because you'll find that in those moments, that's where that scripture starts popping out. Yes. And, you know, you can have a word, but there's your word and there's God's word. I'll tell you which one's more powerful. You know, I don't want to bring people my word. I want to bring them God's word. I want to, you know, if I can bring scripture in there, then it's going to be even more powerful than that. And uh, also to read a lot of scripture if you want to prophesy because it increases the language with which the Holy Spirit can use to speak to you with. It's like it increases your vocabulary almost. And it helps familiarize yourself with the heart and the nature of God, shaping your worldview and your words and how you treat people. And I think this is probably a good moment too. I shared some of this last year, but I'm just going to share it quickly again. Just talking about prophetic etiquette. It's not just about being polite. It's about helping everyone continue to grow in this without uh, losing the plot along the way or doing dumb things that actually like push people back or away from God. Because... I mean, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I'm sure most people in this room have had really good words from God and others, you know, there probably would be the odd time where you're like, man, that didn't really go very well at all. Let's not be the guys where it didn't go well, you know. And so, um, number one, love the people that you're speaking to. Love them. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the spirits, especially prophecy. I think it's not a mistake that those two things are linked. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire prophecy. So it needs to come out of a heart of love. And, uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it goes on from there. It says, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. So this is something that God wants us doing and really wants us pursuing. And when we speak to people, we do it for those three things, strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. I spoke here last year about build up, talk up, and cheer up. That's what our, pro- that's what our prophetic words should be doing. They'll be building up, talking up, and cheering up what God is doing in someone's life. And tone is so important, eh, when it comes to communicating. Yeah. How many know you can say exactly the same words and your tone will make all the difference? Yeah? yeah. yeah. 
I mean, you could say to someone, hey, can we, can we catch up? Can we talk? Versus, can we talk? <laughs> Two completely different tones, exactly the same words. Yeah, yeah. So the tone and the heart with which we communicate it's really, really important. And it's important when we are prophesying, we are basically speaking on behalf of God to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we want to make sure we are representing him well. Right. Mm, yeah. The words that come out of our mouth and the heart with which we present it has to line up with who he is. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, there's probably no gift in which the way that you see God mm. is so powerfully represented to others as through prophecy. You know, sometimes there's people who want to bring a hard word or rebukes to people. There's, you know, we find them from time to time in the church, they come in and they just want to rebuke the church and they want to rebuke this person. And, you know, they kind of almost like dress up in like the Old Testament robes and come with the staff and, you know, thus saith God and, you know, call down hellfire and brimstone on everyone and whatever. You know, you see this sort of stuff that kind of goes on. And some people think that that is prophecy because the God that those people serve is a hard God. He's an angry God, and he's a mean God. That's why they're doing it that way, because they believe that they are accurately portraying the heart of the Father when they bring these words of rebuke. But I think it's interesting that when Moses said, God, show me your face, that the Lord passed ahead of him, and he spoke his name. Remember what he said? The Lord, the Lord, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love who will display his goodness and his kindness to generation upon generation upon generation. That was how God wanted to be introduced. And it's interesting because it does go on afterwards to a whole bunch of like, you know, there is another side of God that you really don't want to have to see. But the fact is, though, that his first foot, his approach, the way that he relates to people in the first instance is as a God of compassion and a God of love and a God of grace. And even... Even if you felt like God had given you a hard word to bring, if you really loved someone, you would find a way to bring it in a way that would build them up and not tear them down. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So we've got to love people. You know, they're not just there for, for us to, to, you know, rebuke and make ourselves feel better because we don't feel like good enough for God, so we go and take it out on everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. And I say these things only because it happens so much in the church, unfortunately. Yeah. For some reason, people still don't get get this one you know they still feel like you know making people feel terrible about their life is somehow you know uh, a, a prophetic act i don't believe that that's true you know i honestly believe that even when the old testament prophets were being hard with israel they were doing it out of love they that they were prepared to go to whatever extent to see this nation turn around you know and i believe that we've got to do that too we've got to have a heart of love number two is open language Lots of, I feel that God might be saying, I think that he might be saying. Don't say, thus saith God. Don't say, God told me and you must. That's not cool. What that does is just back somebody into a corner. Because then if they don't agree with the word, then suddenly they've got an issue with God. You know, so that's why we, no matter who, no matter how strongly you feel someone, I really feel something, I really encourage you to always couch it in those sorts of terms. Hey, I'm just feeling like the Lord's saying. Yeah. I think he might be saying. Because then what that says is, hey, I could get it wrong as well. Yeah. It's just humility yeah. to be able to bring it in that kind of context. So lots of open language, being, being humble. And uh, keep it reasonably short as well. Don't make the person feel like they're being cornered by you or they can't get away. <laughs> I say these things because this stuff happens, man. Yeah. Um, better to leave them wanting more than to give them too much, <laughs> I think. Number three, be very careful with hatch, match, or dispatch prophecies. I mentioned this last year, but, you know, when it comes to babies being born, when it comes to weddings, or particularly when it comes to when someone's going to die, you know, please be very, very careful with those sorts of things. You know, um, better to kind of steer away from those sorts of stuff if you possibly can, only because, you know, uh, what, as a pastor, often we, and, and Chris and Judy can identify with this, we often end up having to clean up the mess in somebody's life. <laughs> You know, some days I would love to be a traveling itinerant evangelist. Be awesome. We're just going to come in and go, you know, this is going to happen for you and that's going to happen for you. And like, see you later. And then, you know, three months later when they're still struggling with it, you know, it's, and I mean, not saying that that stuff is bad. It's, it's good to be able to do that. But just be, be careful with, with some of these things. Tread carefully in those kind of areas. Uh, number four, try not to be too directive. 
you know, um, I see this or feel this, therefore now you need to do this. You know, leave the interpretation up to the person. I feel like God is saying blah, 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 blah. What do you think that means for you? Because you might find actually that their interpretation and their application of their life is wildly different, you know, to what it is that you think. I've often found when I'm prophesying over someone, I think I know what it's about, and I find out that I'm actually totally wrong. I know nothing about what it's about. God knows, and so he's got this message communicated, but actually it means something totally different for the person. So don't step over into application. Let the person figure that thing out. And that kind of uh, goes into number five. Encourage them to seek other prophetic voices as well, especially on important decisions. You know, there is wisdom in the counsel of the multitude. And so uh, don't set yourself up to be the only person who is like the prophetic person into their life. You know, encourage them to go, hey, look, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I feel. Why don't you go, you know, there's this person over here. That, why don't you go and seek what it is that God is saying? I want to encourage you, actually. If you are ever facing something in your life, a big decision, because I see people making big decisions in their life and they, they just kind of wake up one morning and then they just go and decide to do it. And it's a massive, massive decision that could really affect so many people. I want to encourage you, man, get some input. Like, I mean, if God is real and if prophetic people are around and out there and in the church, why not check in first? Just makes sense. Like, go, go and say, hey, look, this is what I'm feeling. And, you know, I'm, I'm just feeling to do this. Would you pray about it? And I love that. I love it when I see people coming into church and, you know, they talk to me and they talk to four other people and say, listen, I've got this big business decision to make. Would you please pray about it and just get back to me and let me know. And I'll bring my perspective and somebody else will bring their perspective or whatever. And somewhere in the middle of it, when it's all linked together, you start to hear the voice of God. It's just so awesome. So tap into that, man. Don't just kind of like, oh, well, I woke up one morning. I'm just like, just going to go and do this thing. You know what I mean? Tap into the, the, the prophetic blessing that there is there in the church. And look, the more that we do this stuff, the more comfortable that we'll start to feel in it. You know, we start to really become aware that actually, you know, God will move. Now, I encourage you just to take risks. You know, sometimes you'll get it wrong. And sometimes you get it right. But when you get it right, it's really cool. You know, I had this, um, I was in a meeting once and praying for this guy. And, uh, I, you know, as I was praying for him, I just started seeing all these blueprints and everything. And I said, I'm seeing like blueprints and stuff. He goes, yeah, well, I'm an architect. I mean, I didn't know that. But that was super encouraging for him when those sorts of things take place. But, you know, there's been many times too where, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm wondering about this. And the person's like, no, nah, doesn't mean anything. That's okay. You get that from time to time. I'll tell you what is interesting, though, the number of times that actually I've prayed for someone in the moment, and they're like, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. And then like a week later, <laughs> then they email me back and they go, oh, you won't believe what actually just happened in the last week. Because when we're talking about prophetic stuff, sometimes it hasn't happened yet. You know? And I'm not saying that to get myself or any of us out of a thing, but I'm just saying, hey, just, just keep going. Yeah. Keep it positive. Keep it short. Keep it encouraging. Do it with a heart full of love. Do it often. Pursue it, pursue love, pursue prophecy, yeah, yeah. and let's have the word of God released in our church. Amen. Yeah.